Do you love eating pasta, but you don't love all the carbs? Then stay tuned because today I'm sharing the best low carb pasta alternatives so that you can eat what you love. Hey everybody, Erin here with Healthy Mom, Happy Family. Now, if you love pasta, but you've been limiting it or avoiding it altogether because you're concerned about the amount of carbs it has, then this video is for you. Because today I'm sharing with you my top choices for low carb pasta alternatives. I'm gonna tell you why they're great for pretty much anyone who loves pasta, but doesn't wanna have that big impact on blood sugar. Now, before we dive in, just wanna remind you, if you're looking for tips and tricks on managing your blood sugar and type two diabetes, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a new video. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you why low carb pastas may be a good alternative for you. I'm also gonna share with you what types of low carb pastas exist and why they work. And stay tuned until the very end because I'm gonna be revealing my favorite brands of low carb pastas and why I love them so much. All right, so let's get started. First, I wanna to talk to you about if you really need to choose a low carb pasta. Because if you have diabetes or you're trying to limit the impact of pasta on your blood sugar, I want you to know that you really don't have to give up pasta entirely. When it comes to diabetes management, you pretty much can have any food you want as long as you work to balance it so that you can still maintain healthy blood sugar levels. Now that means with pasta, if you prefer the normal traditional pasta, you can have it, but you just have to watch the portion size. Pretty much a half a cup of cooked pasta, which is kind of like the palm of your hand, that's about 15 grams of carbohydrate. And because it's usually coming from refined carbohydrates, they're quickly digested, and that's what can elevate blood sugar. So for most people, having a half a cup of pasta when it's balanced with a good source of protein and healthy fats, that can really help you to enjoy pasta without blood sugar spikes. Now I get it, you might be saying, oh my gosh, who's gonna eat just a half a cup of cooked pasta, right? So you might want to know about low carb pastas because you might wanna eat a larger portion or maybe even mix them together with the traditional pasta so you get a little bit more without worrying about your blood sugar so much. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you the low carb pasta alternatives that are available to you and how you can in include them into your diet so you can really choose the best one for you. Okay, so let's talk about what to look for when choosing a low carb pasta alternative. When you are looking for a lower carb pasta, you wanna look at a couple things. Okay, so the first thing you wanna look at is what are the total carbohydrates and how much fiber is really in the food? And you wanna look at the ingredient list to help you see this. So this is gonna help you to understand how many digestible carbs the pasta contains, because that's gonna give you a better understanding on how it's gonna impact your blood sugar. And also, uh, it's gonna give you an idea of how many carbohydrates are gonna consume in one portion, so you can determine if it's really the best low-carb alternative for you, and what's the appropriate portion size for you to have. Now, the second thing that I think is really, really important is we have to talk about taste. You know, to me, this is kind of the most important thing, because I want you to enjoy what you are eating. Now, personally, I would rather eat a smaller portion of a pasta I really love than eat a huge plate of something I didn't really like the taste of. Okay, so when we're talking about pasta alternatives and low carb alternatives, there are many, many different ones. Not everyone is gonna to appeal to you and not everybody's gonna love the taste of every single alternative. So I want you to really focus on the one that tastes best to you because I want you to enjoy the food that you are eating. Now, another factor we wanna consider when we're looking at lower carb alternatives for pasta are ease of use. Okay, some brands and types of low carb pasta are a lot easier to prepare and to prep than others. So I want you to make sure you consider that when making your selection to make sure you're actually gonna prepare it and incorporate it into your diet. Okay, so let's jump in and look at all the different types of low carb pasta alternatives that are out there. The first one I wanna talk about is chickpea pasta. Now this is pasta that's made from chickpeas and chickpea flour. So it tends to be higher in protein and fiber and lower in total carbohydrate than traditional pasta flours. But I do want you to note that these pastas will still contain a source of carbohydrate because chickpeas do contain carbs. Um, but because they have a higher protein content, they have more fiber, they're gonna be absorbed more slowly into the body. They're broken down slower, so they're releasing sugar into the bloodstream more slowly, and that's gonna usually result in less of an impact on blood sugar. So you'll tend to see that chickpea pastas don't spike blood sugar in the same way that traditional pasta might. The other benefit that I really love about these is because they are rich in protein and fiber, you tend to feel more satisfied when you eat them. So even if you are eating a smaller portion to keep the carbohydrate in check, you tend to feel more satisfied from it as well. 
Okay, so now let's talk about edamame pasta. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, I really want you to look into it because edamame pasta is made from edamame, which are soybeans. And so this pasta is usually rich in protein and it has very few carbohydrates, but it typically has a similar look and feel to traditional pasta. The only difference is the color is a little bit greener because it's from edamame. So if that bothers you, that's the only thing to consider. But otherwise, the mouthfeel, the look, the texture are very, very similar. Um, this pasta also tends to be free of gluten and grains and dairy and egg. So it works really well for most individuals who have allergies, unless of course you need to avoid soy. And I do like this pasta because on top of having a lot of protein and fiber, it contains very few carbohydrates. So when we compare it to some of the other pasta alternatives, this one tends to taste and look a lot like traditional pasta with one of the fewest levels of carbohydrate. All right, so now let's look at black bean pasta. So this is pretty similar to chickpea pasta because this pasta is made from black beans and those are rich again in fiber and protein and they do contain a plant-based source of iron, which is really great for anyone who has a diet that's low in iron and you're trying to get more in your diet. But just like chickpeas, because black beans are beans, they do still contain carbohydrate. So this pasta, when you're comparing it to traditional pasta, it will have less overall net carbs. Um, so it's gonna have a more minimal impact on blood sugar. However, there still are carbohydrates. So you're still gonna have to be mindful of your overall portion size. Um, like the chickpea pasta, I really love that this pasta does have the fiber and the protein because it's gonna be a lot more filling. And when we look at most black bean pasta alternatives, um, they do tend to have a similar look and taste um, to traditional pasta. The only difference again is the color. Um, when they're being made from black beans, this pasta is usually more black or gray in color. So it really does have a similar taste to traditional pasta, but for some people, they don't necessarily like the color being different. So that's just something to keep in mind. But in general, I really love black bean pasta because it's filling, it has fewer carbohydrate, and it's a really great source of plant-based protein and fiber, which are things that all of us can benefit of getting more in the diet. Okay, so next on the list is pea protein pasta. Okay, so this is pasta made from pea protein. And this is gaining a lot of popularity. It's a really good low carb pasta alternative, um, but usually it's not gonna be by itself. Okay, typically the pea, pa <laughs> it's hard to say, <laughs> pea protein pasta is gonna be combined with things like bean flours or oat flours to make more of a pasta-like product. Um, typically, this does have a lower carb content, it has more protein, has more fiber, so you're gonna see with these types of pasta alternatives, lower net carbs, more fiber and protein to fill you up, um, so generally it's gonna have less of an impact on blood sugar. Now, another alternative to pasta are just higher fiber pastas. There's a lot of brands out there that are low carb pastas that are basically made high in fiber because fiber is just a carbohydrate that passes undigested through the intestines. So it's gonna have less of an impact on blood sugar. Now, high fiber pastas can come from a variety of sources and they're a really great way to enjoy more pasta with fewer carbs, fewer calories, and less impact on blood sugar. Um, but what I do want you to know is that when you are adding something to your diet that has a lot of fiber, especially if you don't tend to eat a lot of fiber, um, if you increase your fiber very dramatically quickly, it can have some gastrointestinal discomfort and distress. So do it gradually over time and always make sure as you start to add more fiber to your diet that you're also increasing your intake of water. That will really help you to feel more comfortable as you add more fiber to the diet. And a little trick you can always do with these high fiber pastas, especially as you get adjusted to it, is you could fill your bowl half traditional pasta, half of the high fiber pasta. So you're cutting down on the amount of carbohydrates, you're amping up the fiber content, but you're doing it gradually, allowing your body time to adjust to that increased fiber. Okay, now I wanna to talk to you about shirataki noodles. I don't know if you've heard of these before, but if you haven't, they are made from a certain type of yam that really contains barely any calories or carbohydrate. Um, essentially, these noodles are 97% water. So the remaining 3% is really just fiber and a little bit of protein and fat and nutrients. So these are noodles in the, in the sense that they look like noodles, but they really don't provide a large amount of nutritional value, except that they're a really great way to add more fiber to your diet and they add a lot of volume to a meal. So I wouldn't necessarily use these as my 
main meal because you're not getting a ton of nutrition from them, but it's a really great way if you wanna have more side dishes of pasta or add more pasta-like food into your diet, it's a great way to add that volume and fiber. Okay, so now let's talk about spiralized veggie noodles. I am sure you have come across a lot of low carb pasta recipes online and they'll say, you know, use spiralized veggies like zucchini noodles instead of pasta as a way to make it lower carb. Now, I love noodles made from veggies. I think they're a great way to add more vegetables to your meal and there's a pasta-like feel to them. But I mean, let's be honest, when you're eating a spiralized zucchini, it doesn't taste exactly like traditional pasta. So I think this is a really fun way to add more vegetables to your plate, a great way to incorporate some variety to your dish, but I wouldn't necessarily say this is exactly the same as swapping out traditional pasta. So you have to kind of weigh the pros and cons and determine what you're really looking for when it comes to a pasta alternative. I think they're great. I definitely think they're something that adds a lot of value and vegetable to our plate. So I would definitely encourage you to eat more, but I don't want you to say, you know, I'm giving up pasta and I'm just gonna eat zucchini noodles from now on when I don't feel satisfied. You know, if that doesn't really cut it for you, there are some more pasta-like alternatives that you can swap it out for. So one night zucchini noodles, one night it's chickpea pasta, and you can play around with it so that you really satisfy those pasta cravings. And another low carb pasta alternative you see a lot is spaghetti squash. Okay, so this is very similar to those spiralized vegetables. Spaghetti squash is a vegetable, but what's neat about this is when you cook it, it really just produces spaghetti like strings. So you just take a fork and you can pull them out and you don't have to do any spiralizing to get this. Um, it's definitely a lot higher in fiber and lower in carbs than traditional pasta, but it does still contain a few grams of carbohydrates, so you do want to account for that when it comes to blood sugar management. Okay, so those are all the types of low carb pastas available, but you're probably wondering what are the best tasting options, right? I think we all want to know that. And also, you know, what brand names are out there that you might want to choose and look for in the store. So now I'm going to share some of my favorites with you. So if you are looking for a variety when it comes to the type of pasta you're choosing, um, you really want to look at two specific brands. Okay, these are kind of two on the top of my list because they have a lot of low carb pasta alternatives and a lot of variety when it comes to their pastas. So these are Explore Cuisine and Banza Pasta. Now I love both of these brands because they really have a diverse line. Okay, so if you look at Explore Cuisine, they have pastas made from everything from beans and legumes, like black bean pasta, chickpea pasta, and lentil pasta, and then they also have edamame pasta. Um, I also love the variety of noodles because you can find penne, you can get lasagna noodles. You know, there's all different varieties. So depending on what dish you're trying to make or replicate, you can do it with fewer carbs in a healthier way. Um, and these pastas, because they are higher in protein, they're higher in fiber, they're lower in net carbs, you're gonna find that they are gonna have less of an impact on blood sugar. Generally, you feel more satisfied from a smaller portion because of all the fiber and protein, but they do tend to taste very similar to that traditional pasta in both look, in variety, and mouthfeel. So it's a really, really great alternative. Now, Banza Pasta, if you're not familiar with the Banza company, uh, they make most of their products from chickpeas and chickpea flour. So this allows their pasta to be rich in that plant-based protein and fiber, by, and also have fewer carbs than traditional pastas. Now, what I love about them too is the variety. Okay, they have spaghetti, lasagna noodles, bow tie pasta. They even have these fun wheel-shaped pastas, which is great for your family. And all of their pastas have fewer net carbs than traditional pasta. Uh, what's really great is they even have a mac and cheese option. So if you really want more comfort food, um, they have mac and cheese now made from chickpea flour. So you get that comfort food with fewer carbs, more fiber, more protein, and you can see that it has less of an impact on blood sugar. Now, what I really, really love about both of these brands that I mentioned is they're pretty much available nationwide. Um, you can find them in most major retailers. You can order them online, you can go on Amazon. So there's a lot of ways to find these products and purchase them. And price point is pretty comparable. So I think you're gonna do fine with adding them to your diet. It really comes down to personal preference as well as you know what variety or what type of noodle you're looking for. Okay, so remember I talked to you about those shirtake noodles that are really low in calorie and carb? Well, a brand name to look for for those is something called Miracle Noodles. And these noodles are pretty cool because they're made from 
um, shiitake, so they have very little calories, lots of fiber, but they don't just come as a noodle. You can get them as fettuccine, you can get them as ziti, angel hair pasta, which is really, really fun. And they're also available in a lot of major retailers nationwide, so they're pretty easy to find, but you can also order them direct from the website. So it gives you a lot of options, because um, traditionally, when you look at shiitake noodles, it used to just be you could find them just as noodles, and that was it. So to find them in all of these fun varieties is a really great way to incorporate them into your diet more often. Now, when it comes to spiralized vegetables, you have a lot of options. Okay, now I, I definitely love spiralized vegetables because I think it's a fun way to just get more veggies on your plate. But to be honest, unless you're gonna purchase a spiralizer yourself and you're gonna make them for yourself, um, it's kind of hard to get them into your diet. And honestly, it's a little bit of work, right? To get the spiralizer, to wash the vegetables, to cut them, um, to store them, and to eat them before they go bad. <laughs> so you can do it and definitely not, you know, telling you not to. I think it's great if you wanna do that. But for a lot of people, that holds them back. So what's really nice now is in the frozen food section and even in the fresh food section, you can find already done for you spiralized vegetables. Um, in the frozen food section, you can look at Green Giant. They have spiralized vegetables. They have frozen spiralized zucchini. They have frozen spaghetti squash. So it's kind of done for you. And what I really like about those frozen is there's nothing added. There's no sauces or flavorings. So you can put them into any recipe you want. Um, another really great, place to look for these in the grocery store is just look over by your produce section and look in the section where they have, you know, the pre-cut and pre-washed produce. T generally, most grocery stores will have um, fresh, done for you spiralized veggies. Uh, sometimes you'll see them. Zucchini is the most common, but I've seen them even from sweet potatoes. I've seen them um, from spaghetti squash. I've seen carrot ones. So there's a lot of different places you can look for those. But that in the, um, in the fresh produce section is where you tend to find those spiralized vegetables in your grocery store. Now, when it comes to vegetable-based pasta, it's not just spiralized vegetables. Um, if you want to get shelf-stable vegetables, either canned or in packages that are shelf-stable, I want you to look at the brand from Palmini. Um, this is a really great company because they make pasta noodles, lasagna noodles, linguine. Everything is made from hearts of palm. And they only have four grams of net carbs per serving. So what's really fun about this is it's vegetable-based. It's a great alternative to just those veggie zoodles. And it really does taste and look a lot more like actual pasta. Again, it's not just spaghetti noodles. You can even get lasagna noodles from them. Now, you can find these on their website. You can buy these on Amazon. So really accessible. They ship nationwide. And it's a fun way to get more veggies on your plate and more delicious pasta alternatives that have very, very few carbs. So there you have it. Those are my top picks for low-carb pasta alternatives. So now I wanna hear from you. Comment below and let me know, have you tried any of these brands and did you like them? Or maybe there's something I left off the list that you love and I wanna hear about it. So let me know below. And if you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss new tips and tricks. Thanks so much for joining me.